Well, let's turn then uh, for the final time uh, for a season. I'm sure we'll come back to the book of Revelation sometime. Let's uh, turn to Revelation 22. We pray, Father God, how we thank you uh, that you have revealed thyself to us. The Lord brought light into our darkness. Thank you that you have revealed to us Jesus Christ, uh, risen from the dead, ascended, victorious and majestic in all holiness and might and power at thy right hand. We thank you, Lord God, that you've revealed to us our great need of such a great Saviour. We pray then you would speak and reveal more to us even this night, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, we have seen, I uh, trust, uh, that this book has, uh, has shown us what it set out to show us. It is uh, a revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, no longer on the cross, uh, no longer in the tomb, but victorious over sin and death and hell, and at the Father's right hand, glorified, majestic in purity and power, King of kings and Lord of lords. And uh, he is in heaven and preparing a place uh, for all who love him and all who believe in him. And so we uh, have seen, uh, I trust, uh, the, the beauty of heaven and have a full assurance of where we are going. And I do hope and pray that uh, if nothing else, um, if you're asked, uh, what is heaven like? Uh, then you might be able to reply uh, on those headings that we've looked at so far. It is a place of no mores, and it is a place that is far more exceedingly abundantly than anyone could ever imagine. Let me remind you uh, of some of the no mores. We look back at chapter 21, and that great verse, verse 4 of chapter 21 and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Praise God for heaven and the glory that is the home of the believer, and done with death and sorrow and pain and tears no more that's heaven and we have seen also uh, that heaven is far more and we saw something of the far more uh, last lord's day uh, evening in uh, chapter 22 verses 1 to 4 um this this great picture of uh, of of the river of life uh, of uh, abundance uh, of of the trees that give fruits in great abundance. And we saw that the lamb was there. And it's, it's not Eden, similarity to Eden, but it's far more than Eden, uh, heaven. Uh, and tonight, uh, as we close out the book of Revelation, uh, I want us to see another glimpse of heaven under another heading. And that is um, the heaven is achieved uh, and it's finished and there is nothing more uh, nothing more to be done uh, it's all finished uh, we need to understand that jesus christ has done everything for us for any of us to get to heaven there is nothing nothing more to be done jesus christ has done it all and friends, whatever your thoughts are, let's be sure that there is nothing for you to do, nothing for me to do. Um, Jesus has done it all. Uh, in his ministry, he met people who asked him, uh, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, there's, there's nothing for us to do. Um, when the, gl the glories of Jesus Christ crucified uh, and ascended, uh, were preached on the day of Pentecost. Uh, people were cut to their heart, and they asked, what must we do? 
and there's nothing to be done. We must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, repent and believe the gospel. That's, that's all that's to be done, uh, and it's finished. Uh, you need, we all need to understand that. There is nothing more, and you just have this picture of, of, of a finished, um, and it's, it's the echo of Jesus Christ on the cross. You know, as he's crucified, he cries out, it is finished. He's done everything. God has given His Son, His only Son, and there's nothing more to be done. Uh, the great parables of Jesus, and, and everything's prepared, and go into the highways and byways and compel them to come to the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's all done. All the food's prepared. And the sacrifice for sin is done. The Lamb is in heaven. We saw that. And His sacrifice is complete. There is no more sacrifice for sin. All through the Old Testament, many, many sacrifices. But none of them ever atoned. None of them dealt, ever dealt finally with sin. They were only pointing towards one final sacrifice. Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus has come. He's lived and he's died. He's dealt with sin, all your sin, all my sin. It is finished. Heaven, there is nothing more to be done. You see that in verses 6, 7, and 8. He said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. Uh, the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things, heard them, uh, and he'd heard them all. And his response was he just fell down and he, he, he sought to worship the angel. And the angel said, no, 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 I've just brought you the message. It's the Lord that's done everything. And there's no more to do. All that we have to do now, John, all that you have to do, friend, worship God. God who's done all this, who's prepared all this, who's finished everything, that you and I just need to take all that's been done. <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> He's done everything. From beginning to end, salvation is of the Lord. We were cast out of Eden. We were never going to get back. But even as we were cast out, those words, the seed of the women will prevail. And he's come and he's done everything. And as they nailed him to a cross, thinking, as the devil thought he had won, Jesus cried with victory, it is finished. Heaven is achieved because everything has been done. Everything that's promised by the prophets. Uh, that's what uh, the angel says uh, to John in verse 9. This saith unto me, see thou, and do it not. Don't worship me. I, I'm thy servant, the fellow servant of thy brethren, the prophets. Everything, everything has been promised. Here we are, book 66 in the Bible. And, and every book has promised this. And there would be, there would be life for those who believed. And all the promises of the prophets are done now. Jesus has done it all. The saving work of God, done. Every promise of the prophets, done. The grace of God declared to the nations, done. So John responds, oh, that I might worship God. We've got to believe it's all done. You know, there are still people today who say, if God would only do something else. You know, if God would come and sit with me, if God would do this for me, then I would believe. And the reality is we would not. Jesus said, they won't believe if someone is raised from the dead. 
They have Moses. They've got my word. It's done, friend. Don't ask God to do anything more. He has done everything. Heaven is opened wide. There is nothing more to be done. Secondly, we need to see that there is nothing more to be written. Um, You know, God didn't have to give us his word. In his mercy, uh, he commanded the prophets to write. Uh, He commanded holy men guided by the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, Through many, many centuries, different places, different people, and he commanded them to write the word of God. And we've got it all now. There's nothing, nothing more to be written. Um, and again, verse, verse 6, he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. The Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants these things which must shortly be done. Uh, verse 10, he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. You know, right now, uh, the, the Bible is a finished book. There is nothing more to be written, but praise God, friend, it is an open book. Uh, the pages are open. You can read it. Um, and, you know, we only have ourselves to blame if we don't take time to read um, God's holy word. It's all there. There is nothing else to be written. The love of God is amazingly declared. And all over the world, uh, more and more languages, the Word of God comes. And people read the Word of God, and it's a life-giving Word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God, and it's a written Word. These are the final verses of 66 books. Everything we need to know about God, written. Everything we need to know about ourselves, written. And it's an open book. There is nothing more to be written. And so, we are given these strong warnings uh, about not altering what we have. And how many people have failed to take heed to the warnings of Revelation 22, 18, and 19? There is nothing else to be written. Verse 18, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19, If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Uh, It's written. There's nothing more to be written. We don't add to it. Um, That's what many in the church have done. Um, Roman Catholic tradition particularly, but others. And other parts of the church have just taken away. Um, And you can go to many places of Christian worship, so-called, And they'll tell you, you don't need to take heed to that part of the Word of God. You don't need to take heed to that part. We do not add to the Word of God. We don't take away. Heaven is achieved by believing the Word of God as is written. There is nothing else to be written. And we are without excuse. We can read. Friend, do not ignore that which God has written. In his amazing love, he has prepared heaven for those who believe in his Son, uh, Jesus. And that's what his word tells us. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Those who believe on the Son have life. Those who do not believe, the wrath of God remains upon them. And, and this, this great call, and it's clear, we need to repent and believe the gospel. Those are the first words of Jesus Christ in his public ministry. And they're still true. We need to repent, acknowledge our sin. 
all of us. None righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We need to acknowledge what we know, that sin separates us from God. But Jesus has come and atoned and dealt with and taken upon himself all the punishment that's due to us. And heaven is prepared for a people like us. It's a place for all eternity where there are no mores. It's a place for all eternity that is far more than we can ever imagine or think. And it's a place for all eternity which is obtained because there is nothing more to be done. Jesus has done it all. All that is required is finished. And there's nothing more to be written. It's all plainly before us. And as the Bible closes, I don't know what you have in your Bible, but and, um, at the bottom of Revelation 22 in my Bible are the words, the end. Uh, and I had a look through my Bible, and those words aren't in any other book. They're not at the end of Ephesians or, or John's Gospel, but that's, that's, it is the end. And there's, there's no more to be said. So let's just consider and be amazed. What is, what is the final word from God? And what is, you know, what is God Almighty, his final word to men and women like us who are cast out of Eden, rebels in our hearts, selfish, living for ourselves, self-seeking, having no time for God, and still refusing to believe his glorious gospel. You know, his, the last word from God could be, get away from me and never come again. But his last word is, come. Come. What a, what a gracious God. Look at verse 17. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. What a great God. All through history, when he's sent his prophets, and when the people have heard the voice of the prophets of Almighty God to repent and to believe in God. When at the last he said, I'll send my son, my only son, the reverence him. And the son of God came and lived among us and graciously invited us to, to, to come into the heaven, into the kingdom of heaven. And we crucified him. And 2,000 years on, he's still a God who says, come, come, and take of the water of life freely. And you might say, well, of course, God, God's saying, come to, to good people. God's going to say, come to all the nice people in the world. We can understand that. That's not the case. He says, come to sinful people, to people who are full of shame and guilt and people who cannot save themselves because there's none righteous and not, not one of us is good and we'll never make ourselves good enough. And it's not, it's not just for some elite people. Look at verse 17 again. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life. Come. That's God's final words. But it's not, it's not the case that he's, he's suddenly just decided, you know, it's about time I invited people to come. You know, even a brief study through the Bible will tell you that all through history, despite sin and rebellion and despite um, sinful idolatry, spiritual idolatry. 
And, and God has always said, come. And so you can go back to the prophet Isaiah. You don't have to turn there, but Isaiah 55, those great words, come, come, those who are thirsty, come to the waters of life, come buy without money and price. Uh, you can go to Isaiah 118, come, let us reason together. Your sins are as scarlet, but they can be as white as snow. And you can go anywhere, and you can find God graciously saying, why don't you come? And Jesus, the Son of God, comes. And his great call, come unto me. All you labor and heavy burdened and laden down with sin, why don't you come unto me and rest? And I'll give you life. And you hear the words of Jesus crying over Jerusalem, 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 how often I would have gathered thee. How often I called you to come, but you would not. Jesus' last word. Uh, you know, there's, there's nothing more to be said. And the last word of Jesus Christ is come. There's heaven, there's, there's eternity, and there's life. And, you know, why wouldn't you come? You don't have to do anything. Jesus has done it all. You know, you don't have to wait until you're worthy. You'll never be worthy. Jesus knows you're not worthy. Jesus knows that you don't deserve it. You know, you're not unique. None of us deserve this. But he's done it all. And his final word is come. And Jesus is coming soon. We hear that at the end of Revelation. But he's nothing more to say to you than this. Come. The book of Revelation. What a book. What a journey. Twelve months. And I trust that the Word of God is, has come to you plainly. Many are the mysteries of the book of Revelation, but there are many things which are absolutely clear. And none more so than here at the end of the final chapter. Heaven, heaven is there, and heaven is open, and is open because of what Jesus has done, and there's nothing more to be done, nothing for you to do, nothing more for God to do. Jesus, Jesus has done it all, and he's defeated sin and death and hell and, and Satan, and, and it's done, and we need to hear again the cry of Jesus on the cross. It's not a cry of sadness. It's a cry of victory. It is finished. The door of heaven open. Nothing more. Nothing more to be done. And there's nothing more to be written. And there's nothing more to be said. And what a journey it's been through this book, but there's a greater journey to come. That journey to eternal glory. To the land Praise God of no more, no more tears, no more sorrow, no more death. A land that is far more, far more amazing than we can ever imagine or think. And heaven that is obtained, and there's nothing more to be done. Praise God, Jesus has done it all. There's nothing more that has to be written we have the full word of God, nothing to be added, nothing to be taken away, and nothing more to be said. But praise God for the last word of Jesus Christ. And still tonight, he says to us all, come. Come and believe in me, and I'll take you safe to heaven. Come. Come to the Savior now. Come, come, come. Let's pray. 
Father God, how we thank you that for ruined sinners like us, Jesus has come. Not for the righteous, but for sinners to deal with all our sin and take us from this world that is undone, a world of sorrow and decay and death, and take us to a new heaven and a new earth, to eternity, and to be forever with the Lord. There's nothing more to be done, nothing more needs to be written, and nothing more needs to be said. And we thank you for the final words of Jesus. Come, come to heaven. We pray we might all come in faith. We ask in his precious name. Amen. Let's sing, come to the Savior now. He gently calleth thee. Father God, we thank you that for all those who come in true repentance and faith, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God shall never leave them, but will remain with them now and until Jesus comes or calls. Continue with us, Lord. May our fellowship be sweet. We ask in his precious name. Amen.